Back in E3 2012, I was watching with a good friend of mine, and he was being very cynical as he watched. I remember one particular demo of Crisis 3, and I believe they were claiming it to be running on a PlayStation 3 or an Xbox 360. However, my friend was saying it was running on a PC, and through the entire demo he was constantly criticising them, being very negative in general. And at the time, I was very annoyed at him, very frustrated, because he was essentially sucking the fun out of E3. It's a bit like going around to an orphanage and shouting, Santa's not real. But, to be fair, he was correct. They were running it on a PC, and it came out very soon afterwards, and he was right, he was true. So rather than saying to him, you ruined my E3, I was actually quite happy that he'd opened my eyes a bit. But at the same time, I think he did take it a bit too far. And then the following year, in 2013, the Xbox One was announced. And I have to say, as I was watching the unveiling, as many other people were as well, I was noticing things that I thought were a bit gimmicky, things that just didn't matter to me. Something in particular was the fact that they were um, advertising its TV capabilities, and I was just thinking to myself, well, I've got a TV, I, I want a games console. And so I was quite if you want, I was being cynical. However, the friend I was watching it with was being the complete opposite, very much like I was at that Crisis 3 demo. He was going on about how it was excellent, everything was amazing, how it was all innovative and great. And so in these two instances, I saw two sides to the same coin. One person was being extremely cynical, and the other was being very naive, I guess you could say. And after experiencing these two different instances of two very different opinions, I realised that it's good to get a balance between the two. There are certainly advantages of both. If you're very cynical, you're also very practical. You're able to uh, see things that other people might be ignoring because they just want to be happy and enjoy it. But if you're naive, you just enjoy everything more. It's good. You're actually having more fun because everything is uh, whimsical and magical. And that sounds like I'm being patronising, but it is just sometimes nice to shut all the bad stuff out and just enjoy things. There really are benefits to both sides, but there are also negatives. Of course, if you're very cynical, it just means you're being very negative outwardly, and also this can just impact yourself. And if you're being very naive, you're very easily taken advantage of. So what it's good to do is to strike a balance between the two, and I would say that I personally lie, I'd say slightly more towards the cynical side these days, but I do try my best to embrace a bit of naivete as well, to just have a bit more fun. If you're someone who sees something advertised, it might be a game, but it might just as easily be a film, a bit of music, it could be anything. Uh, you may want to instantly try to think of the disadvantages to it, to try and stop yourself getting disappointed. But if you're doing that constantly and relentlessly, you just end up being extremely negative. And negativity is, is you know, it's an unfortunate byproduct of a very practical act of being cynical. Sometimes it's good just to lay back a bit and just embrace the uh, fun, the enjoyment. And let me give you an example of somewhere I, where I think I went a bit too far with the cynicism here. So we all know about CGI trailers, live action trailers. Now they can be enjoyed for what they are, just really awesome pieces of work. Something I really like is the CGI trailers for each World of Warcraft expansion. I think they're really awesome to look at. Uh, now, they are in no way representative of the game itself, in absolutely no way. The graphics are better, just it makes it look like the whole experience is a ten times better than what it is. And you can take this in three ways. The first way is to look at it and think, this isn't representative of gameplay, I hate this, it's just trying to trick me into buying the game, how dare they do this? And then there's the other way, wow, this is amazing, look at this game, look how fun it is, look at all the graphics, it's amazing, it's incredible. And then there's the third way. Wow, that's a pretty awesome trailer. You know, I understand it's not what the game's like, but wow, that was very impressive. I really enjoyed it. And that is probably the best way to go for, because the other two ways, one's extremely naive and one's extremely cynical, and they both have the negatives. But if you just appreciate it for what it is, then that's probably the best way to go. The same can be said for free-to-play games that include microtransactions. There are, again, three ways to look at it. The first way, oh, they're just trying to suck all the money out of me. I hate this. They're just greedy, greedy developers. They're just trying to suck all the money out of me. And then there's the other way. Oh, I've got to buy everything. I've got to buy everything. Oh, it's so much fun. There's so much to buy here. I can get everything. I've got so much money in the bank. I can spend it all in this game. And then there's the other way. 
you know what, uh, there's a system here that I could exploit for myself. Uh, they're offering a free game and if I want to, I can buy some skins. You know what I'll do? I'll try and resist buying those skins or those extra buffs. I'll just play this game and enjoy it. You could even apply that to Evolve, which isn't free to play but does have DLC or microtransactions, whatever you want to call it. In the game, there is the ability to uh, buy skins for the different monsters so you can have different looks to them. It's totally non-essential, you'll have no gameplay advantage, but some people have been annoyed by their very presence, and I would say, well, what is the point? Would it, if they weren't there, you probably wouldn't care. It's, it's just, look, I don't really agree with the fact that they're charging for it, but as a result, I simply do not buy it. I simply ignore it, and I don't feel any the worse for it. Maybe I would have preferred if it was made unlockable, but... I think if they weren't in the game at all, I wouldn't care, so the fact you have to pay for them, I don't care either. And also there's been a talk of how some of the maps that will come out for Evolve will be free, which is just, an all, you know, getting a free map is much better than just being charged for skins. But there's just a modern example of it. You might say that these days it's all too easy to be absolutely consumed by cynicism, to descend into full cynicism because the internet has allowed us to really see all the faults and the problems with these different games or different films. It allows you to really, everything has a very harsh light shone on it. There's nowhere to hide. Uh, for me, back in the day before I really used the internet, the only impressions I got of a game outside of the game itself were the advertisements. So things I would have seen running before a film in a cinema, uh, different billboards, it would have been entirely positive. And so it was all too easy just to embrace the naive side of my personality, just to accept it and really think, oh, this is awesome. And then only when I finally get to the game to realise it might not be what it was. Uh, but now on the internet, we get these... Uh, we, you get hundreds of non-biased reviews for games. You've got loads of critiques of the games, people mentioning the flaws in the game. And so now it's almost a complete opposite. Now it's all too easy to be fully cynical, especially as, well, I have to say, many companies do make a lot of mistakes. You very easily lose faith in them. Uh, something I, I noticed in the Battlefield Hardline interview, one of the questions that the interviewer asked was, uh, will the game work? You know, w will it work? Will it be functional? Because, of course, uh, Battlefield 4 had a few problems with it with its uh, networking when it first came out. So it's all too easy to embrace your cynical side these days. But that just means there is a ton of negativity. And people can go way, way too far with it. There is a way to misinterpret what I'm saying here. You might think I'm trying to apologise for these companies' mistakes. I'm absolutely not trying to do that. I think companies should be totally held accountable. But the thing is, if you become in yourself, I'm really speaking just as individuals. If we are too critical uh, and our expectations are too high for our products, then there will always be disappointment. There will always be anger and angst. But, of course, if you're naive, the same thing will happen because you'll always expect something awesome and then feel let down when it doesn't meet your unrealistic expectations. As I say, it all comes down to moderation. With so many things in life, it's good to get that balance right in the middle. Through this video, I've been using terms like naivety and uh, cynicism, but they really are just words for things like optimism and pessimism here. And everyone wants to feel like they can be optimistic, it just makes our lives better. But pessimism can be a far greater survival tool. It can allow us to prepare for the worst and therefore not be shocked when it does go wrong. It can allow us to manage our expectations to grow a tougher skin. It can allow us to not stride too far. And it's actually, in many ways, a far greater survival tool. But there comes in the question, what's the point in surviving? if you're not taking the time to enjoy it. And that's where optimism comes in. It's not just the ability to live, it's the ability to enjoy that life. You must embrace both sides. You must accept the yin and the yang, everything. You may have, at some point in your life, uh, this won't apply to everyone, but for some people there is often uh, that point, that point in life where not necessarily something traumatic, but something uh, broke your naivety. In some cases, it might just be learning that Santa's not real, but in a more harsh case, it might be something like someone you trusted betraying you, something like that, and then you realise that the world isn't uh, sunshine and rainbows. And there's two ways to take that. You can either be twisted and warped by that, you can be broken, you can become a very just sour individual, or you can just take it as a simple lesson.
I shouldn't blindly trust, I shouldn't expect everything to be great, but at the same time, goodness does exist. I should appreciate the goodness, but expect at the back of my mind, create contingencies for disappointments and negativity. As I say, and I've said this so many times, it's like a broken record, but moderation, balance is the absolute key. Do not be a naive person that is easily tricked by advertising. Do not be a cynical person that uh, cannot enjoy anything, that is constantly feeling negative, not just because it projects onto other people, but also because it will make you feel worse in yourself. So that's all I have to say on this fairly vague and broad topic. As always, people, thanks very much for watching and see you next time.